بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله جل وعلا نحمده كما نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فذلك المهتدي ومن يذلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam Again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Our subject this evening is another wonderful, important, interesting subject which is Al-Khushu' Kalimat Al-Khushu' is a very interesting kalima, it's a very important kalima, Khushu' Kalimat Al-Khushu' Ma'naha Shu'uru Sakina أول معنى كلمة خشوع الشعور بالسكينة والهدوء والطمأنينة في القلب. so then the brief or the surface meaning of the كلمة when you ask people كلمة الخشوع they said كلمة الخشوع بمعنى humble humbleness to be humble. but كلمة الخشوع if we want to take the, the meaning of the kalima, the closest meaning is the mental and spiritual peace and satisfaction. Mental, spiritual peace and satisfaction. That kalima tul khushu. It's not just to humble yourself. Minan nasi man yata khashia. Some people, they are trying to act to khushu. Omar ibn al-Khattab said, if I find any young man try to act to khushu, I'm going to straight you up. Because sometime in Medina, because they get into a tadayun, they didn't just want to humble their limbs, walk limping. Omar said, no, walk straight. Al-khushu is not in your limbs, it's not your body. No, it's in your heart. Then al khushu is the mental and spiritual peace and satisfaction. al khushu is that sakina and that hudu which we have in our hearts. And al khushu is masdarul iman wa taqwa. Khushu, that mental and spiritual peace and tranquility. That is the root of fear and humility. That is the root of taqwa. That is the root of internal tranquility. If we want to build our internal systematization, if our internal system is not in order, we have to go back to khushu'a then khushu' is the way if we want to build our internal self, we have to take the way of al-khushu'a. Al-khushu'a is masdarul falah. It's the source of prosperity. Success internally is coming from al-khushu'a, kalimat al-khushu'a. Spiritually, mentally. To be mentally balanced is from al khushu'a. Khushu'a is a medicine. Sometimes people have stress. The world is so heavy on you. Go back to Madrasatul Khushu'a. Take some tablets of Khushu'a. Right? Two in the morning, not a two, inshallah, in Zuhr Salat. Not a two in Asr. You have maybe one in Maghrib. Yes, get four in Salatul Isha. Ten of them for Tahajjud. Always you take the tablets of Khushu'a to bring your mental balance. So Al Khushu'a is very important in our life. 
Das sei Allahu tabarak wa ta'ala. Said in Al-Quran, as Brother Tariq just read, Qad, an Qad, kalima to Qad. If Qad is followed by fi'alu madin, then Qad come to be harfu tahqiq. Qad. And here in this ayah, Qad followed by fi'alu madin. Past ten is to confirm and to emphasize that this is necessary. Kad aflaha, kad aflaha. Prosperity and success is the pro is the property of those who submit their will to the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and put the teachings of Al-Qur'an through the directives of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam into practice that is al-mu'min qad aflaha al-mu'minun indeed without doubt prosperity and success is for those who submit their will to the will of Allah by accepting the teachings of Al-Qur'an through the directives of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, call al mu'minun, not qad aflaha al muslimun, but qad aflaha al mu'minun. Qad aflaha al ladina taqadu bi anna Allah huwa rabbul alamin wa anna shari'atahu hi al masdar masdar al amni wal wifaq wa tawfiq. Those are the mu'minun. When they believe in Allah, by confirming in their heart that He is the Lord, the only one who deserves to be worshipped, and then they feel that the system being established by Him is the only system can serve man for prosperity. So those people, those are the gainers, those are the ones who gain al khushua because that humiliation, that subjugation, that acceptance, that submission, that obedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them that kind of shu'ur bi tuma'nina wal hudu fil qalb. That is al-khushur. Qad aflaha al-mu'minun. But the question of uh, how these people achieve al-khushur? How to achieve al-khushur? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said alladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'un they get al khushu'a through the link the highest link which Allah tabarak wa ta'ala established between him and his servants that is as-salat as-salatu fi ad-din ka ra'sa 'ala al-badan if you want to get khushu' we have to go back to salat to get the training of getting khushu' because salat is that type of link which is so important as a head in the body as salatu imadu din faman aqamaha faqad aqama ad-din wa man hadamaha faqad hadama ad-din salat is the fundament is the fundamental base of this deen those who establish the salat they establish the deen but those who neglect and shown away from salat they destroy this deen then we get al-khushu' from as-salah and al-khashi'un humul mu'minun alladhina sajadat qulubuhum bayna yaday Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not those who prostrate their limbs before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but these are the people when they prostrate they are hard prostrated sajadat qulubuhum sajadat qulubuhum bayna yaday Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa fadat a'yunuhum shawqan ila liqaihi wa ta'ziman li jalalihi those are the people when they stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they feel his present deep in the bottom of their heart and they have the pleasure to be there 
to meet their Lord, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. They feel that their duty is to glorify him and magnify his majesty. That is the feeling they have. It's not just what they call to make fard. Oh, salat is fard. You have to make salat. What they call raka'at, sajadat, tahiyyat, taslimat. No. Al-qalb itself is prostrating. When the lizan is making al-qira'ah, al-qalb is making al-tilawah. Qira'atun. Bimutaba'ati tilawati al-qalb. واللسان يقرأ والقلب يخشع إذا فخشوع خشوع القلب بمعنى طلاوة القلب والقلب يطل القرآن أن كلمة التلاوة تلاوة تلاوة بمعنى التلو في اللغة العربية التلو بمعنى متابعة شيء متابعة شيء هذا تلو هذا وهذا تلو هذا بمعنى هذا بعد هذا هذا متابعة هذا إذا فتلاوة القرآن ليس عبارة عن قراءته بل قراءة القرآن ومتابعة معانيه ومتابعة معانيه تصدر من القلب بواسطة الخشوع إذا that mental and spiritual feelings and love you have for Quran when the lisan is reading the qalb is following so that will motivate the, the feelings of the person then that will followed by tears drop from the eye but those tears they are coming from the heart which is the evaporation of the heart the love motivated the heart and the heart has that sensitivity and that reflect to the feelings of the person which is the shu'ur and that relate to dumur tears why because if you go back to kalimatul khushu' lughatan khushu' is lower part of the earth you have a mall and you have a valley. A valley, they call it Al Khushua. If the earth come to be Ardun Khashia, when the rain fall, the rain is falling but to the mountain. But when the rain falls to the mountain, where the rain gonna go? To the valley. Why? Because the mountain feel proud to say, this is me. The valley feel humble to say, this is me. So then Allah Ta'ala pour the rain top of the mountain. The mountain think, oh, let me drink this. And the rain said, no, I'm just passing by. I'm going to the valley. I'm going to the khashia. When the al-ard is khashia. Then the water is dropping to the valley. From there you can have the plant, the fruits, the everything. Where you can find the water, the manfa'ah. Why? Because the land lower itself, then get the result. The same thing when you come to similarity is when the person is making salat. Do not feel proud. Humble yourself. When you humble yourself, when the heart humble itself, that will bring the tears to drop down. So then that humbleness to humiliate itself, Imam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is al-khushu'a. That's why when you have khushu'a, you gain prosperity. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ They come down. That literally kalima to khushu'a. Khashi'a bimana khafida mun khafida. Ardun mun khafida bimana ardun khashi'a. Alladhina haula alladhina lahum kulubun hurrirat min sijni alhawa. Kulubun hurrirat min sijni alhawa. 
Those are the people, they have hearts being free from the jails of temptation. Their hearts are free from the jails of temptation. Kulubuhum hurra min sijnil hawa. They're free. Why? Because they turn their hearts towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they're in salat. They are moving themselves from al-hawa wa shahawat, temptation. Wa radiyat qulubuhum an ta'isha fi ubudiyatillah. Those people, their hearts accepted to be servants of Allah, not just the, the physical being. The heart inside of yourself, that heart which is the source of feelings, the heart submit itself ila ubudiyatillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is khashia. Al khashia. Man radia kalbuhu an yaisha fi ubudiyatillahi wahda. Be wasat at salat. We have to know the true salat. Lis salati nurun. Lis salati nurun. Yushriku fi qulubil musallin. Salat has a remedy. Light. Coming through the hearts of those who are performing salat. But la yanaluhu. La yanaluhu illa khashi'un. No one can gain that remedy, that light, that reflection, except those who humble themselves while they are making salat. Then salat is very important because salat is giving you that success, that prosperity in your life. Allah wa ta'ala say in Surah Baqarah, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Help yourself by patience and tolerance and salah. Meaning, build your internal self through patience and salah. Then, Allah wa ta'ala said, salah is very hard. It's not easy to get into salat in reality. It's very hard, except for those who humble themselves. Salat come to be very light to them. Then seek help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the salat. Then Allah wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ those people, they don't have doubt that one day they will meet their Lord. That when they come to the Salat, they don't have any doubt that the Lord they stand before, they will meet him one day. And then have in their mind three things. They don't know when, they don't know how, they don't know where. But they know for certain that they will meet that Lord. So these people, they prepare themselves that this Salat maybe is my last Salat. That is Salatul Khashi'ah. They call it Salatul Muwadda'in. Salatul Muwadda'in is the person when he starts at Allahu Akbar, he fears that this Salat can be my last Salat. Maybe if I make my Salatul Asr before Maghrib, Allah will come and take me. I don't know. Then let me prepare myself now to take this salat as salatu muwadda'in. It's a bye-bye salat. Why? Because dunya, hayatu dunya, la'ibun wa lahun, is nothing but sports. And something you cannot achieve is blue. Life is blue. You see this, this color, there's a blue, nothingness. That is life. That is dunya. Dunya is ibarah and shay, dani, something you cannot finish. So there is no need to after this dunya. But al khashi is the one when he enters his salat, he's thinking about akhirah. He's thinking about last moment of his life. So that makes him 
so ready to have that link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's thinking about that death will come to me, no matter what's going to happen. But I don't know when death is going to come to me, how death is going to come to me, where death is going to reach me. But I know in my heart, through my khushu' that aynama takunu yudrikkumul maut walau kuntum fi burujin mushayyada. Wherever you are, wherever, wherever you are in this world, Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala said, that will reach you, will find you out. Even you are in a very high, well-built houses, death will find you out. So those are the al-khashi'un. They feel that Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala aqrabu ilayhim min hablil warid. They feel that Allah is near to them, that they are jubal events. So these are the people, they have al-khushu'a, al-khushu'a fi salah. Yadunnuna annahum mulaqu rabbihim wa annahum ilayhi raja'un. No matter what happened, they have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this is why when you read the qualities of those who submit themselves, one of the qualities when you read, inna al-muslimina wal-muslimat wal-mu'minina wal-mu'minat, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala prays those who humble themselves. Wal khashi'ina wal khashi'at. Yes, Allah mentioned that. Khashi'ina. Those are the ones who has that internal peace and tranquility by feeling that no one, no one deserves to be worshipped on earth except the creator and the sustainer of this universe. That is al khashi'a al khushu' Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in a hadith narrated by Imam Muslim an Usman ibn Affan radiyallahu anhu qal qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma min imri'in ma min imri'in muslimin tahduruhu as-salah maktubatan fa yuhsinu wudu'aha wa khushu'aha yuhsinu وضوءها وخشوعها وركوعها إلا كانت كفارة لما قبلها من الذنوب سبحان الله whoever anyone a Muslim who ready for his salat when salat comes the time of salat comes he said then he got up and he perform the wudu correctly and he ready for his khushu' properly. And he make his ruku'ah. Ruku'ah here means raka'at. Ruku'ah ba'da ruku'ah. To perform the raka'at accordingly. Alayhi salatu wa salam said, Illa kanat kafaratan lima qablaha min al That will be a substitute as a kafara for whatever been done as a sin, that will be the kafara of those sins. Meaning if the person performs salat properly with khushu'a, Allah forgive his, his previous sins. وَذَلِكَ كَمَا رَوَى عَنْهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. One day, one of the sahaba, كَمَا رَوَى Imam Tirmisi, Ask Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ayyul a'mali afdal. What is the best action? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Qal as-salah. As-salah ala waqtiha. To perform salat on time is the best. Qultu summa ayy. And then what is the best? Qal Birrul walidain to be kind to your parents. Qultu thumma ayi. What else is the best? Qala al jihadu fi sabi lillah. Hadithun muttafaqun alayhi. You can see that as salatu fi waqtiha is so important. As salatu fi waqtiha afdalu min al jihadi wa min al bir bil walidain. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, be right to Imam Tirmisi, 
He said, Inna awwala ma yuhasabu bihi al-abdu yawm al-qiyama min amalihi as-salah. The first thing will be count and checked in the day of judgment for the servant before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the salah. And alayhi salatu wa salam said, فَإِنْ صَلُحَتْ فَقَدْ صَلُحَا فَإِنْ صَلُحَتْ I'm sorry. فَإِنْ صَلُحَتْ فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ وَأَنْجَحَ If salat is correct and good, this person reached the stage of prosperity and he passed. And anjaha, he passed the exam. وَإِنْ فَصَدَتْ But let's say it's corrupted. The salat is not good. فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَسِرَ He's going to get into the valleys of perish. And he's going to get lost. He missed the direction. And he lost. Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, بَشِّرُوا الْمَشَّائِينَ بَشِّرُوا Give glad tidings to الْمَشَّائِينَ الْمَشَّائِينَ Those who are the ones who are getting up to reach the Salatul Jama'ah on time. Al-Mashya'ina vil-zulam ilal masajid. Those who are rushing in the dark to reach the Jama'ah at the masjid. Vil-zulam ilal masajid. This indicates the importance of Salatul Jama'ah. But how to get that? If you have proper readiness in you, in your heart, that will move you up to go for Fajr and go for Salatul Isha and for Maghrib Masjid. To have that habit, because that will create or develop a, that nur which is in you can gain in a salah. Briefly, I want to give you how to achieve al khushu. This is the ulama they said about how to achieve al khushu. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الطريقة التي تؤدي إلى الخشوع في الصلاة. The method you can take to reach al khushu in your salah. أول شيء is al علم. Al علم هو الطريقة الطريقة الأساسية الطريقة الأساسية للوصول إلى الخشوع. You see sometimes people they are making salat but they don't have they don't have knowledge of what they are saying. That's why they don't have khushu. Because you don't know what you are saying. Then how are you going to get any feeling in your heart? Sometimes you ask, your, you ask yourself a question. Wallahi, I don't know why people they making salat and cry. And I cannot cry. I cannot cry. I am in the salat. People are making salat crying. But for me, I cannot cry. My tears cannot come down. Something wrong with me. Sometimes you tell yourself that. Meaning, you don't have khushua. Meaning, when you are making salat, you don't have ilmu ma anta taqra. Izan al ilmu bil Qur'ani masdarun min masadir al khushua. If you know the meaning of what you are reading, that will help you to get al khushua fi salat. Then it's very important to begin with what I was saying, like al lisanu. You have al-qira'atu bil-lisan. Amma at-tilawatu bil-qalb. And at-tilawatu bil-qalb is tadabburu al-qalb bil-ayat. Bima'ani al-ayat. Al-lisan is making qira'a, but followed by the heart. The heart is concentrating on the ma'ani. That is the ilm. And if you don't have that follow-up, you never get khushu'a. Like you are reading, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. والتين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين. but you don't have any lesson from that. if you give سلام عليه وسلم brother what is the lesson we can drive from that surah ما فقه هذه السورة. he said oh the surah is just Quran you know make salat you read Quran that is Quran is fard is sunnah here to read Quran بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين. What you can get from الحمد لله رب العالمين. Yes, it's part of فاتحة. When you're reading, you have to read it very nice, but it's just nice. 
No, you have to make a tadabbur. You have to ponder upon the, the meaning of alhamdu, kalimat alhamd. And alhamdu, you reflect that this hamd is milk lillah, is a property of Allah. Alhamdu lillahi, rabbil alameen. So then, awal shay, a tariqa alati tu addi ila al khushu' fi salati al ilmu. Athani al fahm. Many people confuse between fahm and ilm. Al ilm huwa idrak a hukmu shay. Idrak a hukmu shay. Bima'ana al ilm. O idrak haqiqatu hukmu shay. That is al ilm. Amma al fahmu huwa al idrak al daqiq. لي ما لديه من الشيء من المعاني مثلا المعاني المضمورة في الشيء هذا هو الفهم مثلا سمعت the people said علمت ذلك نعم but فهمته الفهم بما الإدراك الحقيقي إدراك حقيقة الشيء so then when you are making salat you need to read the Quran even the ayats you are using for your salat Try to know Haqiqatu hadhi al-ayah Sometimes knowing Sababu nusul al-ayah Will help you To ponder upon the ayah Yes Then Min wajibi al-musalli An ya'rifa o an yudrika Al-ilm wal-fahm lima yatluhu Fi al-salat Limada? Lianaka iza fahimta Ma'ani tilawa fi al-salat تستطيعوا ضبط الخشوع في الصلاة. If you know the meanings, you can concentrate. You can keep your خشوع in your صلاة. Because now you are concentrate. You keep on track. You be on track. Because sometimes you make صلاة. You say Allah Akbar. You have خشوع. الحمد لله رب العالم. Before إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين. Your mind travel all the way to Chicago. Talking to your friend about like a baseball or something but you are in salat and i'm sitting next i'm i'm hearing you saying the lesson is is, is is reciting but where's the mind is in the chemical bank or chase bank or manhattan bank you know calculating how many dollars you have oh somebody have to bring my money tomorrow i have to get my check friday now you are making salat but your mind is in your check oh man where are you going to go to get my job, to get a job? Oh, tomorrow is the exam. And you are making salat. You are making salat. Allahu Akbar, you are, talking, you are thinking about John, who is a prophet or kafir. He's not going to give, give me you know, good marks in, my, in, my, in that subject. Subhanallah. No, don't think about this dunya. Al-bu'd. Anit tafakkur bi dunya. That is al-khushu'ah. Yes. At-tafakkur bil-akhira will help you to get khushu' when you are making salat. As I said before, you have to make, you have to have the feeling of salatu muwadda'in. Tahdiru jalalillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala fil qalb. Try to present the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to present that in your heart. That will help you. Tahdiru jalalillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. أن تحضير الحب تحضير الحب بالقرآن وبالصلاة تحضير الحب will reflect to bring الخشوع when you make your تكبير how to ponder upon the معاني تكبير كلمة الله أكبر تكبيرة الإحرام الله أكبر أخذنت علماء النفس they said it's a very very a very very great uh, 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 reflection because when you say Allahu Akbar you are saying that Allah is the great not Allah is the greatest because there is no superlative when you come to Allah it's wrong to say Allah is the greatest this sigatu tafdil doesn't have the ma'ana sigatu tafdil fi lugha Allahu Akbar bimana Allah huwa al-wahidul akbar 
لا كبرياء لأحد إلا لله جل وعلا الله أكبر you are testifying that Allahu Akbar raising the hands is another demonstration of whatever else have to be thrown behind my back whatever else must be at the back until I finish Allahu Akbar my wife oh Allahu Akbar children Allahu Akbar money Allahu Akbar prestige and oh, oh Allahu Akbar Allah Akbar الله أكبر من العمل الله أكبر من الأسرة الله أكبر من الجاه الله أكبر من المال الله أكبر من كل شيء الله أكبر you throw everything behind you that is the feeling the person supposed to have when he said الله أكبر he bring خشوع in his heart and he throw everything behind that الله أكبر الله أكبر من كل قوة في الأرض don't think about police and oh, Bill Clinton or uh, you know 52 bombs and Saddam Hussein Allahu Akbar Saddam Hussein Allahu Akbar yes Sheikh Mubarak <laughs> later Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar later for, for all of them then you have long list I want to just keep saying those names meaning all of them Allahu Akbar all of them Allahu Akbar min kulli shay Allahu Akbar min kulli sultan Allahu Akbar min kulli mutajabbirin taghin Allahu Akbar. You are telling them Allahu Akbar. That's why Subhanallah. When Al Hujjaj went to Mecca, this is the message. The only message they have is Allahu Akbar. Even Malik Fahd. He's sitting there. Have a long story building. Sorry, sorry. Top of the Kaaba. But these two million people, they said Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. But they don't hear that. They don't, they don't listen to that. Why? Qulubun la fiqha fil qalb. La fahma fil qalb. La idraq fil qalb. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. For all of them. Kullu mutajabbirin taghin. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar min at-tijara. The business. When you come for salat, don't think about business. Allahu Akbar. Tijara. Later. Allahu Akbar. When you go to Mecca, you can see how people they are concentrating between Allahu Akbar and Tijara. When they say Allahu Akbar, oh, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> yes. When you go to the Haram, when they say Allahu Akbar, they don't want to even close the doors. They have to wait until Mutawiyah come with his stick. Sakar al-Bab, ya. Sakar al-Bab. Astaghfirullah azim. Sakar. Sakar, Sakar Bab. The other called 15 minutes ago. But they are waiting for the Muaddin, the, the Muqim said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Ashadu la Muhammad. They said, Sakar Bab. Everybody says Sakar Bab. And when they are running between that and the Haram, they have to get two cigarettes before they reach there. Then when they reach there, then they, they, they step on it. With the smoke is blowing all over. <laughs> And they enter the haram with that. Where's the khushu'ah? They make raka'at salat, stepping on people. As soon as he says, Assalamu alaikum, all the kufis, they put the kufis people down and jumping on the necks of people, rushing for tiyara again. Why they are in Mecca? Just rihlat al shita'i wa saif. They just have the same mentality. Why? Because Allahu Akbar min at tijara Allahu Akbar min kulli shay'in yulhi an nida ilahi wa ta'ati min al-amwal wal nisa wal awlad wa mafatini hazi al-hayat Allahu Akbar nothing absolutely as soon as you raise your hand for Allahu Akbar you raise it as empty hand Allahu Akbar Ya Allah I drop everything behind me Allahu Akbar that is takbiratul ihram you make everything haram for you you don't want to talk to anyone why? Allahu Akbar. They call it takbiratul ihram. Haram to kull shay. Illa mujabahatullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala rabban wa khaliqan wa mudabbiran li shu'un al-kainan. Allahu Akbar min kull shay. Min tijara, min awlad, min nisa, min al-shahawad, min al-karavata, wa min kull shay. Min al-sayara. Allahu Akbar. Min al-sayara. 
Dan raf'ul yadaini inda takbiratil ihram Ihtiraman li maqamillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala Ihtiraman lahu Allahu Akbar If you see what they call These prisoners War prisoners When the army captured Prisoners of war What they have to do You see there They said okay we are here No fight Nothing absolutely We are right there Meaning we don't have gun So this is why, even when you come to Al-Qasam, min ahkam al-Qasam, raf'u al-yadayn wa fathu al-baha. Uqsimu billah. Not to put it this way, no. Uqsimu billah. But when you come to tariq al-Qasam, you come to room. Tariq al-Rum. The Romans, if somebody stole something, they send you to the jail. After the jail, they have to put mat in your hand. They have to put a very... See, those people are making those designs. What do they call it? Status. Okay, they make one you cannot change. They put it here. That you are a thief. You stole something. That will remain there. If that happened to you, you come back to the court. The first thing is that, open your hand. <laughs> Let's say you have one man. They don't even go to the records. They don't have records. Your hand is your record. They don't say, oh, number so-and-so and computer. No, your hand is your computer. You come before the judge, open your hands. Then they check the hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no, cut this hand. <laughs> cut it. But they are so patient. When you come, one, two, three. Oh, this is the third time. Okay, go to jail. Fourth, go. Fifth, go. But seven, nine, no. You are going anyway. Okay, Mujalak, okay, take the hand. Why? Because this hand is a disease in the hand. Take it off. So then, raising the hands is a signal of bara'a. Bara'a min kulli shayin fi dunya. Wa al hudur o tahdir al qalb amam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu akbar. Then you come to dua al istiftah. That is, is bringing khushu'a. وَجَهْتُ وَجْهِيَا لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْرِكِينَ You see, you are making a pledge. You are pledging allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are making salat. Ready for your khushua. Pledging allegiance. وَجَهْتُ وَجْهِيَا لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْرِكِينَ You turn your entire self Towards the one who created the heavens and earth. The one who put everything exists in a pure nature. You turn yourself back to him. And you are saying that, وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ I'm not going to associate anything with you. Not my money. Not my wife. Not my children. Not my proud. Not my prestige. Not the president of the country. Not the army. Not anyone. وَجَهْتُ وَجْهِيَا لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْعَرْضِ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Now you are submitting yourself completely. This is bringing al-khushu'a fi al-qalb. If you know the meaning, al-fahmu wal-ilm. Then, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. After al-istiftah, You say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بمعنى التجئ مع الاستسلام إلى قدرة الله سبحانه وتعالى You are telling Allah لا حول لي ولا قوة لي أعوذ بك يا رب من تسويس الشيطان I am leaning to you I am seeking refuge in you from the problems of shaitan because of shaitan you waswis في صدور الناس I know, and believe me, all of us are facing that problem. Anytime you say Allahu Akbar, that's the time shaitan is ready for you. And anytime you say Assalamu Alaikum, shaitan is gone. Everyone has that experience. Anytime you make salat, always you have the problem of thinking about the salat. You remember one day Muhammad Ali Salatu Wasalam said, Who can perform two rakas salat? With Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala Biduni in Qita'in Biduni any interruption The Sahaba 
Think about it, Imam Ali. He, and he said, if you do that, I will give you my jubba, my gown, this, I will give it to you. It was a big challenge. And they love to get that. But I think, I don't forget, Umar or Imam Ali, one of them, he said, oh, I'll do it. For me, I feel that it's Imam Ali. Imam Ali said, I can do it. Then he said, okay, go ahead. Imam Ali, make the qama and everything, Allahu Akbar. He's reading Fatiha. When he starts Surah to Fatiri, the second eye of Surah to Fatiri, he's thinking about the gown. He starts thinking about, oh, maybe he's just joking with me. No, I don't think he's going to give me this. But oh, if I have it, I'll be happy. Now, where he is now? He's with the gown now. He's with the, 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 the thing. Then when he finished, and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Uqsim, Uqsim Billah. Hal anta ma'a salari am la? Uqsim Billah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi aqul laka sarah. Wallahi ma kuntu fi salat. Kuntu ufakiru fi aljubba. I was thinking about the gown. Because how beautiful it is. I was thinking about maybe, you know, you just want me to do this time or, you know, make some kind of a mizah with me. He said, this is the thing. Al-mal, Allahu Akbar, min kulli jah, wa min kulli mal. Then when you say, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim, that is 10 minutes. That is, you are seeking that you are powerless. You are in front of Allah being powerless. So then, concentrate on this. This is Al-Khushu'ah. Then you start reading Al-Fatiha, which is, we don't have time to get into Fawaidu Surah Al-Fatiha. Because I want you, this is your homework. Everyone must go back to Surah Al-Fatiha to read Fatiha and read Fatiha and read Fatiha. Yes, you really read it. Don't just like it. read Fatiha, but read so deep, read it, Surah sort Fatiha. Of Fatiha is so important, but take little time to read Surah sort of Fatiha, to understand the meaning of Fatiha. La salata biduni Fatiha. Even Salat, you have to have Fatiha. You have to read Fatiha. Then Fatiha is very important. It's not the Surah you don't, you don't, you try to understand like, like Surah Tutin. Oh, I don't, I don't know the meaning of Surah Tutin. Let me go to uh, Tabariyada Abu Lahab. Oh, Abu Lahab, I'm going to think about Abu Lahab. I don't want to keep bothered about Abu Lahab. Let me go to, uh, you know, Surah Ma'un. Oh, helping people? No, I don't want to go. Let me go to Isaiah and Nasrullah. Nasr? Subhanallah. Let me go. But Fatiha, you cannot escape Fatiha. You cannot, it's not a choice. That's why we have to know the meaning of Fatiha. Because it's not a choice. It doesn't say, oh, I don't know the meaning of Fatiha. Let me read Qul Halaw Ahad. No, cannot work. You have to read Fatiha. La Salata Biduni Fatiha. Then, Al Khushu is that preparation which we need in our Salat. Especially when you come for a sujood. Because you see, sujood is the nearest demonstration for taqarrub ila Allah, for seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the last thing I just want to share with you, please do not have that fakey humbleness. Fakey humbleness is, you know, dress so raggedy, twist your hair, you don't want to take a shower. <laughs> What's wrong, brother? Oh, you know, al khushur I have khushur You don't want to eat nice food. Why? al khushur You don't want to go to work. Why? al khushur Brother, this is Junoon. This is not for sure. This is Junoon. Yes, I'm in the house. You know, I don't want to talk to anyone. Why? I am, I'm for sure. You know, when I'm talking, nobody listen, nobody hear me. I cannot speak clearly. Why? I'm for sure. Brother, speak loud. That's why Aisha, radiallahu anha, one day, she was sitting outside and a group of young boys walking pass by and they are walking like <laughs> like they, 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 they act like they fear Allah then Aisha said to the sisters who's these people she said oh these people they are Nassakun Nassa Nassa they are making Nusuk and because they, they remember that Alif al Nuska wal Ibadata wal Khalwata Tiflan wa Hakatha Nujabaw they always want to say, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make always nusuk, nusuki. Like they, they want to think that they are so pious. Then uh, Isa said, well, the Umar ibn al-Khattab is enough example for them. 
when he makes salat, if you, if you pass Umar making salat, you're going to scare. When you see him making the salat, you're going to think about your salat. Especially in saying, Allahu Akbar, you have to, you, you, you feel that something is going on here. He said, that's number one. When he's making a judgment, when he's talking, he's so clear. But when he's beating you, he's so painful. That was Umar ibn al-Khattab. When he's walking, you know, the, the earth is shaking. That was Umar ibn al-Khattab. Why did he act like Umar? So then, the humbleness is not just to act raggedy or, you know, talking like a, I'm sorry, sisters, but some brothers, they talk like, like sisters. <laughs> yes. You know, brother, I, Astaghfirullah Azim, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> huh? You know, as, as in Allah, wa ta'ala, you know, as say the Quran, Ya Sheikh said, Tabaraka wa ta'ala, inna Allah ta'ala, hey, brother, let me ask you a question. Act like a man. Present like so humble in that way. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not al khushu. Khushu is in the heart, not in the limbs. No, if you are a rajul, la budu a rajul. Rajul bimana, rijil. Rijil. Rajul ka rijil. Must be like a foot. You have to walk. Yes. <laughs> Right? But it's not like a, you know, like that. No, that's not khushu. That's not khushu. Some people, when they're making salat, they think that khushu is nobody hear you. You make the brother, bro, lead the salat. MashaAllah. Then he said, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Brother, read Quran. <laughs> and some brothers, inshaAllah ta'ala, they want to take it as a, an expression of humbleness. Whatever they want to say, they have to say, insha'Allah ta'ala. Brother, I, you know, travel, insha'Allah ta'ala. And when I want to eat my food, insha'Allah ta'ala. <laughs> when I want to, you know, I saw the brother, insha'Allah ta'ala. And he was trying to meet me at the bus stop, insha'Allah ta'ala. Believe me, these brothers, they don't know what is insha'Allah ta'ala. They don't know where they have to put insha'Allah ta'ala. They don't know the language. Yes. If they want to talk to you, they don't know when they're going to say inshallah ta'ala and why not. They think that whatever expression must be finished by inshallah ta'ala. You know, I, I am so happy to be here inshallah ta'ala <laughs> to give you this lecture inshallah ta'ala. And I am, <laughs> this is not humble. This is junoon. Walil junoon funun. Yes, junoon has different varieties of junoon. Yes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us ila sirat al-mustaqeem. Thank you very much for paying attention. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us ila sirat al-mustaqeem. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just one question. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what Surah, thinking the means Surah Al-Jiraj. It is uh, Mashaallah. Sure. Uh, what is the denial first way to start to start to say that to lower your voice? Yes. Uh, and when this ayah was revealed, uh, I was reading the Sirah that uh, he lowered his voice and people had to even ask him what he was saying. But that was, this, it's not the Sabah of Nusul. Let me give you the Sabah of Nusul. So I get confused, that's why. I'm You're right, inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am so hungry, inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> yes. You see, if you read Surah to al Hujurat. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق الصوت النبي. You see what happened? سبب النزول was there was a tribe called بنو تميم. بنو تميم was the most powerful after Quraysh من بطون العرب during that time. I know now. But according to قبائل العرب بنو تميم they were the most powerful because they have economic influence. Uh, religious influence, uh, social influence, they're so powerful. Muhammad Ali Salatu was 13 years of da'wah in Mecca. He never, never even talked about Bani Tamim. People just move away from Bani Tamim because if they against you, you are in trouble. Everybody's scared about Bani Tamim. That's continue until Ali Salatu was migrated to Medina. You remember Amul Wufud, the year of the delegations? The Arabs, in Jazeera the Arabs start delegating people on behalf of their Qaba'il to accept Islam in a uh, collective way. Without like one by one come to accept Islam, they just delegate like 
banu kinda banu des banu des banu des then banu tamim sent a delegation to medina when muhammad ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam got the news that banu tamim they sent their delegation to come to accept islam was a big problem when you come to political science because political science is you need protocol protocol is very important alayhi salatu was salam was thinking about protocol who going to protocol these people who is the best person to meet these people why because bani tamim they have lot of culture in them and if they come to islam and they don't have somebody who can convince them to move this culture they're going to bring their culture to islam and that going to cause some disturbance in the growth of islam then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was thinking about who is the right person to meet bani tamim and convince them to take their adat and taqalid out of islam and just submit themselves to islam because they had a problem this is political science then at the end he didn't have anyone in his mind then he called umar and abu bakr for consultation when they they went to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to them i need a protocol here you know bani tamim if they come to medina and we don't take care of their the baggage of the adat and taqalid they have they're going to bring into islam and they're going to implement here and i don't want that happen but i want a very sensitive person who can reach their hearts and take that off from their minds and bring them to clear islam then for certain uh abu bakr raised his hand he said i want to select so and so to be that person then umar said what no no i don't want that person I want so and so to be that person. Then they start raising their voice to against each other. Without even consulting Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting there watching them raising their voice. Oh you are this even Abu Bakr said to Umar that day. Wallahi when I'm coming I feel that if I make a suggestion you're going to oppose me. Abu Bakr said that to Umar. Umar said I don't care <laughs> if I feel that is not right. It's not right. <laughs> that person is so low he's so slow he's so this you, you know this bani tamim if i meet this bani tamim why are they going to accept islam or gonna you know you know beat all of them who are these people so now they are now struggle and struggle and then allah tabarak wa taala send that ayah la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtun nabi it's not they humble themselves no they raise their voice was admonition uh, admonition on them al quran atabahuma fi dhalik fi rafi aswatihim amam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was the sabab nusu so then many people start in uh, uh, in medina definitely start scared about raising their voice then al quran said inna ankaral aswat la sautul hamir you know the donkey i was reading in 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 sira one person went to medina to accept islam When he accepted Islam, gave shahada and everything, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, "What is your name?" He said, "My name is Himar." <laughs> <laughs> That day, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, "Astaghfirullah, your name is not Himar no more, Mr. Donkey. <laughs> your name, no, it's not Himar. Your name is Ammar. You see how he changed the name. That's why it's sunnah sometimes to change the name." If the person come to you and take shahada but his name is meaningless and you know it's a very crazy name change the name Abdul Abdul Qayyum Abdul Salam yes but it's not like Himar like in in the sometimes the, the Muslims in the Arab world sometimes you see some names like Fahad <laughs> Fahad need to be changed <laughs> Asad <laughs> need to be changed Asad <laughs> I said you are the problem you I said you are the problem <laughs> cuz your name is Asad <laughs> Asad Fahad no in Islam is Abdul Rahman Abdul Jalil Abdul Qayyum Dia wal Haq yes but Fahad Asad and Himar but even if you read the tariq of one of the qabail they said we have to name the child very arrogant name because we want him to be shuja we have to name him like Qunfusa <laughs> Abu Qunfusa Yes. Yes, uh, Abu Sulahfa. <laughs> so this time but it's not lowering their voice the sense I'm talking about. Omar ibn Khattab never lowered his voice and Abu, Abu Bakr Siddiq too. He was always speaking straight clear. Inshallah. One more question. Yes. Uh, 
Let's go fishing, inshallah. Okay. Yes, inshallah.